there was one night where we'd had several of you guys here for a couple of rehearsals and we were kind of just used to that energy and then there was this one night when there was like nobody here but the cast and I don't even know if Miss Becca was able to make it that night so we had one director and just a few of the cast I feel like someone was gone that night and it just like it was incredible the energy drop um, and we just had to work so much harder to generate that so it definitely adds something. I have a question along those lines do you feel like <clears throat> Part of that is it helps you become the character more? I, I think so. I'm not entirely sure what causes it. I know for me, and I don't know if it has to do with having written it or not, maybe it has nothing to do with that, but like I, I, have, an, I have a pretty clear idea of what I want to communicate, I think, throughout the rehearsal process, you know, and I'm, and I'm getting into character, memorizing the lines, practicing the blocking and memorizing it. But then somehow, at least in my brain, when it comes down to, you know, dress rehearsals and the week of somehow there's just like a deeper level that kicks in. And I don't know if it's like procrastination or, or, or if it's having an audience, if it's the energy of the audience, or even just realizing that, um, you know, I've known this character for several months. This is the first time they're seeing them. And so I've got to make it really, really clear. And I, I, I don't want you know, an iota of Rochelle left on stage. We need Lieutenant Cole and nothing, but I don't know. So yes, I think. <laughs> I feel very similar. Uh, the rehearsal process, I feel like that I'm acting out that I'm acting. And then when it really comes to the dress rehearsal and the, the performances, I am acting at that point versus acting out that I am acting. <laughs> so I think there's, there's, two different things that are going on there. Um, with the first process, yeah, I'm trying to figure out what I'm doing on stage. I'm trying to make sure my lines are memorized, my line de delivery is good versus acting. There's there's a difference. I, I do think it also is acting to people who you, who you don't have as much of a connection with. Because I think if we had a room full of Caleb and Carson's, the Thomas and I couldn't act at all. <laughs> Because we'd be goofing around the whole time. I know y'all don't believe that because we don't goof around on stage at all. No. But, yes. but whenever you have someone that you don't know is coming, it's made partially a responsibility. I'm not sure, but that helps. Yeah, go on with that. The, I could tell the nights, it's year to year, but the nights where I go out there and stand and I see everybody who's coming in and I hand programs to them and talk to them and say, hey, welcome. Those are the nights where it's hardest for me to stay in character. Any other night when I don't see anything, it's just all black. It's easy for me just to do it and just act in just us and you know, whatever. But if I know who's out there and I know where they're sitting, um, then that makes a big difference in how I act. <laughs> so you were saying it's more difficult. Yes, it's more difficult if I know who's out there. Personally, like the pressure of performance partly comes from like, you know, it, uh, it makes you either focus or get distracted. So it depends on how you respond to that pressure. So like, for instance, I've found whenever I'm like performing on the cello, if I've been practicing something at home, it's easy for me to be practicing and then like see something out the window and stop and think about that. Because it's like, well, I mean, who really cares? In five minutes I can come back and it'll be the exact same. But if you're sitting on like up front and you're playing your song, you don't just stop in the middle and stare at, at the people in the crowd and be like, wow, that's interesting. I need to come back and try to finish this. Here's hoping. Yeah. That did happen once. But that does that kind of, like Ethan said, responsibility where you are like, okay, so I've got to do this a certain way. But also, I agree with Emma that if you know, like, if you think about, especially, I know Ethan and I started off in the back this year, and personally I found that was supremely unhelpful. Mm -hmm. So you get to, because you watch the play like an audience member. Mm -hmm. And so you're yeah, sitting there and the, can the curtains close and the lights come on and it opens and you're standing there and you're watching the play. Mm -hmm. And then you have to go in and be in it. So it's like, there's a moment where you're like, okay, I think we're doing pretty well. And then you're like, oh wait, now I've got to become my character and we have to walk up and join the play. And you know where, and you might, pro it's hard not to notice that, oh, this is who's here tonight and that's who everyone is. And that if you think about that later, it can draw you out of character. It definitely is not helpful if I 
I mean, you're not supposed to look at them. <laughs> but, <laughs> like beforehand, if I know where people are sitting, it's that physical knowing where people are, then my eyes have a tendency to go that direction anyway. So, um, but in some ways it can be very helpful because I do feel that responsibility. We have a short amount of time to communicate our characters and the messages go. <laughs> <laughs> um, something that is a little harder for me and it's more just, I can't overthink it, is when we do multiple performances, is okay, first night was great or whatever, and then I either try to overthink it and like fix a bunch of stuff that I thought wasn't the best, or I try to make it exactly the same as the first performance, and you can't really do either. Yeah. So um, that's something that's a little trickier for me, but. At least for me personally, like any audience is a bad sign, because. <laughs> performance tanks for me per like my best acting is in my room alone that's like i met kenny there and then i kind of had to drag him out on stage and it took forever usually usually i kind of get a feel for like my character's personality within the first two weeks or so and i get him about halfway between the house and the church and then kind of drop him somewhere and it takes a while to pick him back up before that's why we have three months so anyhow, I like there is very little that I do better with an audience. It, some people perform under pressure, and I am not one of them. Oh, uh, yeah, I think it can probably go either way. Uh, I enjoy getting the audience reaction because I feel like the more they react, the more they understand. But I also know that I don't always react audibly. And so I can think something's funny, but I don't necessarily laugh out loud and so or, or I don't make an audible noise. And so they may be like totally in the story, but they're completely silent. So that's like an important thing to remember. There's there's kind of pros and cons to having an audience because, you know, you in some ways you have to pay attention a lot to the audience and how they react, because if they laugh at something, then you have to wait and for your next line so they can actually hear it or whatever and how they respond and everything, but you also have to completely ignore them <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because, you know, you can start looking out at them and then, you know, you might not change your facial expression necessarily, like get out of your character on your face, but on the inside you're, you're thinking like, what is that person thinking? What are they, what are they looking at right now? <laughs> and then you, you're just, you start thinking about what, you know, certain people in the audience that you notice are thinking about the story and, Am I doing this right or, you know, or whatever. The thing that I've tried to do more, just the more years we've done this, is when we do the read through, I try to remember as clearly as I can what I understood, what I didn't, um, what I really liked, or just all the feelings of that first read through because that's what our audience is gonna feel. Because we have the one shot <laughs> with most of them and that's, that's it, that's it, all you got. And so, because after you've done it for three months, it's, you know, it's second like nature, you have it memorized, as we like to say. And um, so I just, that's one thing that I try to keep in mind is that this is the one shot that I have to communicate to these people. And so trying to remember what I felt the first time I heard it is helpful.